Do I sound echoey to you by any chance? Do, Do I, I sound, sound echoey, echoey now? now? Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. We are back in the studio recording a new episode with a special guest all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Today, I'm joined by the owner and operator of LG Creative Co., uh, kind of the marketing prowess behind a number of popular brands around our industry. Uh, and so let's get to know her. Uh, Lindsay Geyser, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, excited to talk uh, marketing and, and stuff with you. Uh, this is a t- topic that we don't really get to hear a lot about in our industry. It's more about knowing somebody that knows somebody that does something for somebody. Uh, <laughs> right. And so it'll be exciting to kind of get some uh, in the trenches kind of speak with uh, what's going on. Um, so give us a little little background. Uh, let's, uh, let's find out who you are, where you're at. Um, you have a little shop down there uh, that you work out of and, and kind of give us the rundown. Yeah, so I am a geyser. So I've been in the industry since I was before I was born. Um, Describe a little bit about the geyser uh, family and the brand and, and all that. Because I mean, there's a lot of new people to our industry that, you know, are experiencing a lot of this for the first time this last summer or this summer coming up. So mm-hmm. yeah, so my, uh, my dad and my uncle builds trophy trucks for a living. So they've been in the off road industry since they were young, too. They started their own shop just about the same year I was born. It's almost 26 years ago. Um, and they are just one of the, one of the biggest names in the, in the biggest trucks in the industry. So we've, uh, we've been going to the races and and building trucks and doing all that for forever. I, they got me into it when I was 12, I had a trophy cart, which is like the introduction little car for, uh, for kids. So I've been racing since I was, 12 and it's it's really just our whole livelihood i mean my dad that's what he does for a living and and now i'm doing kind of in the same industry but doing my living there and so it's it's really our life it's cool so you said you were racing uh when when was the last time you were racing and and do you still look forward to getting into into the trucks yeah so i used to so i went from trophy cart to limited buggy um all short course stuff when i was younger and then Went off to college for a bit, took a break, and then I started racing 6100s, um, which is just another truck in off-road. Um, so I raced that for a couple years, and then that team kind of um, left racing for a little bit, and I haven't raced since then. So it's been three-ish years, three or four years um, since I raced, but I'm still there all the time. Now I'm most of the time I'm in the helicopter, which is also <laughs> not a bad seat to be <laughs> at the races. Um, so still always there, just a little bit different experience. So, uh, right now, you know, some of the brands you're working with are more related to the UTV scene. Um, but there's a lot of brands, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of performance tuning that's coming out of the truck scene into the UTV scene over the last few years. Um, you know, UTV has been exploding since like 2015, Mm -hmm. but over the last, you know, three to four years, it's really started to pump up its amplitude and in, in its growth and in its expansion um, into different areas. And uh, performance seems to be a really big, you know, uh, investment for a lot of people right now um, over the last few years as they uh, travel more, do more, more riding with people with bigger cars, faster cars. They want to keep up. They want to go bigger. Mm-hmm. They want to show off, um, you know, and then a lot more traveling to like Glamis and, and San Hollow and, and all these different places where mm-hmm. um, you can really reap the rewards of having a performance on on tap. Right. So. And I've noticed that the the drag racing scene's really taken off, and some of your your clients are specifically towards that performance group. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of, uh, kind of give us a, an introduction to how you in, got into the marketing side of things, how it got into, you know, you you, you obviously have a lot of tie into the truck racing side. Um, how did that translate into the UTV scene, and then how did that grow into where you're at now? Yeah, so I actually right out of college, so I went to college. Um, for marketing. I did communications, that kind of area. Um, So right out of college, I actually got an internship at Rigid Industries, uh, the lighting company. And from there, it kind of pushed me into that industry. I mean, we're working with racers all the time. It's the off-road scene, all that. Um, So I worked there for a few years. And then right out of there, um, my cousin and my one of my clients, 
since now started a business and a UTV business. And so they had me come on there. So I was a full-time marketing manager there. Um, so that was kind of the jump into UTV off of, and that was still, so that would have been four or five years ago. So, I mean, UTV was huge. It wasn't as big. That was like right when the first, it was uh, really starting to take come off. out. Yeah. And so it was like, it was, it was getting there, but, um, so kind of got in there. We started working closely with evolution power sports who I still work with today. Um, uh, it goes back to that power side of it. They're huge in the industry. It's super fun to work with them. Um, but yeah, so kind of made that transition right out of college. Really, I was that I was that rigid, and then right into UTVs pretty close after that. But so, give us a little rundown of what I mean. Give us a, a quick short list of uh, some of your bigger brands you work with. Obviously, you're wearing a uh, some apparel today that has a number of them on it. Um, <laughs> Listed but, on there. Uh, uh, saw that shirt come out. What was it last week? Uh, yep. But uh, give us a little rundown of, of some of those clients that we all um, are familiar with, and then kind of what you do for them. So that, like, a lot of our listeners are enthusiasts, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are smaller shops, shop owners that have rural, you know, mechanic shops that work on UTVs or manufacturing where they're they're making small parts for these cars. Um, and so they're really interested in, you know, how to grow their businesses and, and all that. And, and so somebody like you, a marketing manager for a company, um, some that's doing creative and con having creative control over, uh, the, the front end of the business, um, kind of explain what you do for a brand and, and maybe some examples of what you've been doing recently with, um, you know, some of the helicopter stuff you've been doing and, and all that. Yeah. So a big part of basically what I do is the the things that you see so whether it's social media uh videos websites business cards t-shirts like you name whatever you're seeing besides the product um is what i what i help out with so um two of my main clients are jeffrey's performance and evolution power sports which are both utv uh based jeffrey's performance is builds utvs aftermarket parts all that stuff and then obviously Evo is the the power side of it. Um, so for both of them, it's full on everything marketing. So from social media is a is a huge thing. Um, content shoots. So we'll go out to Glamis for a few days with whether it's a build or a new uh, product with Evo and go shoot for two or three days. Um, all the apparel um, and all of that stuff. So basically, those are my main. Um, my main clients that I've been with for almost five years with both of them now. Um, and then over the last couple of years, I've picked up um, brands like Rigid, JL Audio. Uh, I just started working with Fox Shocks, which is awesome. Um, and then a few other brands in the off-road. Um, so like uh, Dugans, who builds engines for the trophy trucks, work with them, work with them for a couple of years. Um, most of that stuff is social media and same thing content shoots so whether we're getting shoot uh, we're getting content for those social uh, platforms um and all that stuff but yeah so those are my main ones uh, most of the time we're just getting content and making things look cool <laughs> is pretty much so how much of your job do. do you think is sitting behind a computer designing stuff versus going out and getting video content or photos that would be native to social media, you know, versus like the back history of marketing. Like when you went to college, you know, you probably had a pretty deep education of like print mm -hmm. advertising and <clears throat> standard marketing techniques and things like that, where now we're in the social realm and they're trying to figure out how to educate people on that. Um, kind of what's your balance there? Like how much are you working behind, you know, Illustrator or Photoshop or something versus being out in the field and, and acquiring content? Right. Yeah, it's really honestly, it's probably 50 50 at this point, um, because we're getting that content and I can use. So a big thing is um, the opening weekend in Glamis will bring out a whole crew. We'll bring out two to three video guys, a couple of photographers, all of our cars, and we'll stock up on content for the next few months. Um, and then we use that obviously for campaigns and sales and giveaways and all that. We can kind of utilize that that way. Um, a lot of the time in the office is spent planning for that stuff. So <laughs> my next, I'd say seven or eight weeks, I have some kind of, some kind of shoot that I'm going on. And up until then, it's just been planning for that, you know, finding the, which is another kind of cool part of my job is, is being that middleman to find 
So I'm not personally a photographer or a videographer, but I've worked with a bunch of awesome people and have kind of figured out who um, like has strong suits in certain parts and um, so can kind of find, so a business will come to me with what they're looking for. Um, and then I can kind of gauge, Hey, this guy would be great for this project, or we could work with this gal for this project. Um, so really it's, it's a lot of brainstorming in the office and then planning out and going to wherever it may be that week, <laughs> but it's, it's a fun balance. So one of the conversations that I hear a lot of, um, from business owners and, and whatnot are, uh, they don't know how to take good photos or they don't know how to get cool <coughs> shots. They can make cool products. They can make cool cars. You know, they can do a custom build that's like SEMA quality or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but then at the end of the day, they're just with their iPhone in the shop, taking a picture of it and posting it on the Facebook group or whatever they're doing. Um, yeah. What are some of the uh, kind of easy like tips you could give someone that would be like, because like you're talking about planning, right? You're talking about mm -hmm. we're going to do this thing where we're going to acquire content to achieve goals X, Y, and Z, you know, and and that comes from having a team of people around you that are, you know, in the business that are, you know, editors that are photographers that are videographers. Um, and you're kind of bringing them all to a cohesive sandwich, right? To make that thing happen. Um, mm -hmm. where, you know, the small mom and pop shop or the, the team of guys in the welding shop, they're not really thinking about, you know, what do we have to do to make a really cool video or a really These cool high production? Piece? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what are the differences between, you know, the guy taking his photo and, and doing a full on production and, and where's the, the value? Where do you see the value on social media for those people? And I'll, I'll tell everybody a hundred percent, like some of the time that stuff is way more valuable than these, than these shoots that we go on. I mean, there's times where as social media is my job, but it's very frustrating sometimes <laughs> to where we'll spend all this money, all this time and energy on doing this product and, or project. And then we go and post it. And the 10 second video that I took on my phone of something dumb will blow up and the other thing doesn't. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it's a balance. You always want to have that like clean polished look. And I think that that stuff is great for that. But as far as like, even I still do a ton of stuff on my phone and, and it goes back to, I've talked to a few people lately, just kind of looking for tips on starting to build their platforms and bring those people in and, and start out somewhere. And what I tell them is just post, like, just go out. If you know that you're going to finish this car or you have this new product, like just the planning doesn't have to be finding these expensive photographers and going to some destination and it can literally be hey let's set up this little area to look like this and we'll do a video kind of like swooping up from the product to the car and then like it's super i think a lot of the time we overthink it and and think that it needs to be this big production but content is content and as long as you're putting something out there to bring people in um i think that it's gonna you're gonna see the the results from that yeah, I think there's there's a misconception sometimes when we, the community, are out looking at some of the content being produced and put in front of us. Um, you know, a lot of the times it's kind of out of nowhere, right? Like just mm -hmm. out of nowhere, this company releases this build with these these products or this racer at this event or, you know, something like that, right? And it's just kind of like, wow, I wish I could do that someday versus uh, the reality of it is, you know, they're, they've got their goals that they're achieving with that, that a tactic, right? And I don't want to say it's a tactic like in a negative way, but just that, that process is achieving a goal for them. Uh, and we, a lot of times don't realize what their goals are, right? <laughs> like marketing's right. goals and the community's assumptions are completely different most yeah. of the time. Um, but what it, what reality is, has told me from past experience is that it's the process. It's the, it's the, it's the journey along the way that really gets the engagement of social media and brand identify identification and and um, the, the personal connection between a brand or a racer or or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and so a lot of times people are like, well, I can't I can't show this until like we're ready to show it, like until it's perfect. And something I've learned over the last couple of years is that the whole not perfect thing is what people want to see. And yeah. if, if you're trying to create a connection with a community, that's where you're starting. You're starting from the ground up and showing it along the way. And that's exactly what you're saying is the thing we have to remember is there's a person on the other side of the phone. 
you know, we, we watch for the likes and the views and the follows and all this, but it's a, it's another person just like us on the other side of the phone that like to see the process that like to see, Hey, we messed up here, but we're going to make a joke out of it or, or this kind of stuff. Like it's all about relating to, to your um, audience and remembering that it's literally just our, our friends and the people <laughs> in this industry. Like this industry is really cool in that. I feel like everyone is really, it's, it's like a big family. I mean, it's a, it's a big, it's a big industry, but it's small at the same time. I mean, you hear all, about all these builds and like, it's really cool that it's just all kind of close knit, but, but everyone still has their place. I was just talking to uh, Casey from Casey's Off-Road Recovery over in Utah, who does a lot of recovery of people stuck out in the, in the dunes and the rocks mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And he was saying, you know, the biggest draw for him is that the thing that makes him smile every time he shows up is just that he's getting to meet somebody new and a new experience with a new car, with a new, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It's like to him, it's the community side of it. That's that's the appeal. It's not that he's working and, and getting paid for it. It's like he's being a part of the community. And, and that's a big draw for a lot of these events that we go to. Right. We go to the, you know, the sand sports and we go to the UTV takeovers and we go to the, the different events down in Glamis and stuff. It's like part of the appeal is that we're out doing stuff and smelling it and seeing it and tasting it. Right. But the other part of it is that we're experiencing it with other people. And I think a lot of times when we talk about marketing our businesses and our companies and our brands, we're too focused on if the logo is nice and crisp or if it's the mm -hmm. right color or if it's, you know, along the right beat and the, the hottest music right now or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. We forget that it's the people that we're connecting with that matter. And if we're mm -hmm. losing sight of that, I think a lot of times we just overshoot and we overspend and then we get burnt out on marketing and then we get a sour taste in our mouth. Um, mm -hmm. you know, is that kind of like how you see it is what, what do you do to try to create that connection? And I've even seen sometimes like, and it'll kind of bring me back to that point where, um, I do have the opportunity to work with some of these big brands with hundreds of thousands of followers. And, and every once in a while you just message someone back as a person and tell them their car looks great or, or whatever it may be. And it like makes their day because, from, I mean, we're, we're so far in it that we kind of understand like the people behind everything. But like you said, you don't always think of it like that. You kind of think of it as this elevated brand or this product or whatever it may be. But, um, so I think that it's cool just to relate people to people like that. And I always love to repost, um, repost people's stuff. Like, I mean, we're not the only ones doing cool stuff. Like <laughs> there are people out there that may not have the platform that we have, but they're still out there doing badass builds and right. having fun and all that stuff. So I think that it's just kind of bringing it back to that personal level um, as far as social media goes. And then like, I love going out to the events and stuff and kind of seeing the people that you don't always get to meet when you're just working day to day. So I think that that's always a good a good thing is just to go out and talk to people and just be present. Yeah, there's definitely an advantage to getting out and being physically in the same place as somebody else and doing the same thing. You know, that that's, you know, one of the reasons why I like getting out to the shows and, and the different events, because all those people that I've corresponded to online, all those people that, you know, I've helped share their content or help them launch a product or, you know, whatever the case may be, is so, so sterile when you're behind the screen doing it. And when you can correlate that with somebody's personality, like the way they mm -hmm. talk and the way they joke and, and you're like, oh, I know why you picked that color on that thing. Cause that's the one, you know, you hate that color. So, you, right. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, you know, those types of connections are so that are what solidify kind of that brand identity with individuals. And, um, I've noticed over the last, oh, I want to say about six months, there's been a, like a big effort for people to try to like jump on this like momentum that we've had over this last year. And they're trying to capture every last dollar that, mm -hmm. you know, is possible before maybe, you know, things start correcting. And I think they've lost sight of some of that personal connection. Um, yeah. So looking at kind of like 2022 is coming up here, the show season is what, you know, kind of I would call it, right? And we're going to start seeing events happen. We're going to start seeing trade shows happen. We're going to start seeing club meetings and, and all sorts of stuff. What are some of the the ways you guys look at that as far as a marketing opportunity? Do you just approach it as, excuse me, <clears throat> do you just approach it as we're just going to share stuff on social or are you approaching it as we're going to be at the event, we're going to represent the brand by participating and not just having a booth with some hired local to be behind the table, right? Do you guys go into it with 
We're going to have the guys there. We're going to have the cars there. We're going to race with people. We're going to do, you know, advice and help people get things fixed. Um, is that, is that kind of how you guys approach that? Yeah, definitely. Every brand that I work for <laughs> is at these events and, and has a presence there. And whether it's like last week or two weeks ago, I went to Sand Hollow with JL Audio, who is a big, a big brand. And they went out and they brought their whole, whole rig and their cars. And we went out on rides and we like were a whole, it was, we weren't just there. We were part of the event, you know, we went and went to the concert at night and hung out with everyone. And, and then um, another big one is Evo has a booth out in Glamis that we go out. Um, usually all the big weekends that will go out there and, and it's not just, they do have product out there and we are tuning out there, but we'll have taco nights and go out on rides and, and so it's kind of a cool aspect in this industry that that's work, you know, like we mm -hmm. get to go out to Glamis and, and go work for the weekend and go hang out on the hill with everybody. And like, it's a cool, except for when it's 115. <laughs> well, yeah. And later in the year, we'll do that. <laughs> not, not quite yet, but once the weather cools down, but no, every, every company that I've worked with, that's a huge um, part of their, of their business is, is being out there and, and connecting with everyone and you know supporting even supporting the shows because that's a that's a part of our business too is is the people that put on the shows like the sand sport show is one of our biggest ones that we go to um i love going out there just to meet with everyone and kind of like we've been talking about like just go go see what everyone's been up to and and how how we're all dealing with all the craziness the last couple years and see what new stuff there is and so that's definitely a fun one that we're always a uh, we're always at. Yeah, I think that you kind of slightly touched on, a, on a, an important point is is these events that we all enjoy and go to or we see on social media where people are going to, um, you know, those events don't happen without brand participation, without sponsors that come in and say, we're going to be a part of this. We're going to help lift this community up. And I've had a big kind of I don't want to say like a moral push, but just a, like a a subconscious effort to promote brands that are supporting our industry and not brands that just sell something. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I find it interesting that, um, during this time of growth and expansion in our industry, we have a lot of brands trying to, trying to start up a lot of brands that are trying to grow out of the, where they've been for the last five years or, or whatever. And I think that the best way that we can see growth in our businesses and our industry is to participate in some of these events and to participate in some of these um, things that we wouldn't normally invest our money into. Like a lot of guys were just like, I want to, I want to pay a photographer to come get the best shots of my car in action or of the parts in action or, or whatever the case is, or a sponsor an athlete to have my part on their car. And I think a lot of times we get more value when we invest into those community efforts, the things that mm -hmm. build community connections and, and build gathering and, and experiential, you know, things that we can fall back on. Yeah, I agree. And especially even for the the smaller companies starting out, like you were saying, if you don't want to, if you don't want to go spend money on a big production or go out and do all this, like that's a huge, I guess, word of mouth spot where maybe they didn't hear about you before, but those, all uh, those shows always have a huge crowd. And so there's a good chance that somebody there hasn't heard of you before. And so I think that that's another way to get your name out there and, and be present there and, and, do and that kind of sometimes thing. Sometimes we've talked on the show about just the fact that, how do I say this? A lot of brands go to these shows. They're the ones that do go to the shows that are like, well, I'm going to spend 2000 bucks. I'm going to have a booth. We're going to be there and we're going to hopefully sell a bunch of product. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I try to communicate to a lot of these, these little businesses is that it's not necessarily about what you're selling. It's about the people that you meet and the people that you talk to, because like, like, for example, this last, last year I did the, the, the managing of the marketing material and everything for social and all that stuff for UTV takeover. Mm -hmm. And a lot of brands would come in as a vendor and then they'd shoot out at five or six whenever things quote unquote shut down. Mm -hmm. But that's when all the best marketing time starts is when yep. you're around the campfire, you're around the tent, you're participating in the raffles you're participating in and all the activities that are happening in that nightlife i can't tell you how many people i've talked to where they've solidified you know distribution deals or you know manufacturing deals or you know retail sales deals mm -hmm. and things like that through having a beer with somebody or you know mm -hmm. sharing you know tacos with somebody 
Um, I, I feel like a lot of people just don't even understand that most of your marketing at these events happens during that time, not necessarily yep. during the day, because mm-hmm. there's just so much personal, more connection you can have with those brands. And I've met so many people that I would never have met one on one if I would have never went to those things, right? Like if I didn't yeah. go to that night, that nightlife or go to that trailer where they're having a bonfire and having karaoke or, you know, just mm-hmm. silly things like that. You yeah. meet people and you, and you experience stories that then you're now a part of. Um, mm-hmm. And, and when somebody can have a story that connects you that way, you you have an in and you have a way to connect with them and, and, and a rapport with them. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. And I've experienced that myself a ton of times, whether it's, me meeting someone like the first thing that comes to mind is is russell from buggy whip and i don't know if you've met him before <laughs> oh yeah he, me and russell have stories <laughs> he's a crack up um but i met him out in idaho at a show i had no idea who he was he came over to the booth and, was and you were jealous of his hair let's, let's and, just yep <laughs> <laughs> yep and uh we uh got to talking then and ever since then we were like okay we're 100 percent on board like we want to work with you and and be part of this and whatever you need and so it's just those connections and whether it's in brand or in like brand to brand meeting or we'll get calls hey man i met you out at the show i talked to you for a while like i just got a car we want to come in and build it like it just puts that, like you were saying, just put that face to it and the the personal connection to it. So I definitely think that's huge. So you get them. You've been doing it in, that southern southwestern area is kind of like the mecca of a lot of these UTV brands. They all seem to mm-hmm. have a central location in that southwest zone, <clears throat> whether that be Nevada, Utah, California, Arizona. That that little southwest corner has mm-hmm. a very large percentage of our UTV and off-road brands. Yeah. And uh, there's definitely a benefit for for people being in that region, right? Like you can connect, you can closely go and visit and, and participate. Um, for me, I'm up in the Northwest, right? And I have very mm-hmm. few brands that actually are a part of, you know, we have lots of little mom and pop shops around, you know, the the West Coast or, or Southern Idaho. There's a lot of brands down there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's harder to do that localized networking and so going to events is a huge part of making up for that. Yes. Um, and so like the East Coast, they they have a lot of like small niche mom and pop shops. They don't have big companies. Uh, you go down south, you do have some bigger companies. You got the high lifters, mm-hmm. you got the, you know, super ATVs and things like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, for for a small business that has, let's just say <clears throat> they've been in business for 10 years and they really want to just kind of mo- move the momentum trigger, you know, higher than they have in the past. And they understand now that social makes such a huge difference and and all that. What are maybe some of the tips you would give them to start moving that needle? Yeah, I would say you can, you can almost make connections through social media as well. I mean, we talk about being at shows and, and being in person kind of thing, but I think a lot of the time you can, you can follow along with somebody and, and kind of reach out to them that way is always, kind of making those personal connections over social media. Um, And then as far as like, I mean, just uh, right now, as far as getting your name out there, I've noticed that reels are huge. Like the the short clip videos, whether it's, and it doesn't even have to be anything crazy. It's like we're talking about earlier, you get your phone out and you do a clip of something cool that's literally 10 seconds, put a song on it and, and keep doing that. I mean, it's not always, going to be the first time that something blows up but it's just continually putting out content and and getting people's attention that way i am a huge obviously i have to be because it's my job but i think social media is amazing and i know that it is dangerous (laughs) if you use it in certain ways but but i think it's so cool like there are so many people that i um am friends with on there that i've even never met or i've met once or twice and like i feel like i'm really good friends with them or I can connect with them that way. Um, so I think it's just a really cool platform to be able to, I know that it's scary for a lot of companies and, and especially like you said, if they've been kind of out of it, just doing the, the traditional marketing stuff, it is intimidating and scary, but it has huge potential. I think one of the biggest, um, things that hold people up is, they think of themselves, I can't be in front of the camera. I can't be mm-hmm. the face of this. I can't do this, right? I'm too old or I'm not good left looking or, 
you know, I'm overweight or, you know, whatever there are little mm-hmm. things that, that hold them up. And I, and I find myself telling people all the time, literally multiple times a week is just start doing something. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, a photo of your product, a photo of your machine, a photo of, you know, your manufacturer, your CNC machine. Like people just love watching CNC. Like yeah, that. I know. <laughs> if you, I do. A, <laughs> if you just, if you are in a manufacturing shop, welding, CNC, stuff like that is instant, you know, growth if you would just uh, start doing it. So Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to have, you know, a pretty face. It doesn't have to have any of that stuff. It just has to be, you know, real is what it it comes down to is authentic. um, Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking with one guy, they have a shop and he was like, I can't do this because my shop's not nice enough. Right. Like he's got a backyard shop with, you know, a two bay thing and he's got like dirt floors and like, he's like, I can't, show myself as lesser than these other competitors and i'm yeah. and i thought i was like you're missing the boat you're like you're yeah. one, you're one of us right like that's exactly. that's your cell is, is that's relatable yeah no, so i, I think that. that a lot of people just they get held up and i've done this a hundred times on my own stuff like i can't do that i can't like I, this podcast i didn't i had the idea forever like as soon as i got mm-hmm. into the off-road scene i was like i want to do a podcast and it wasn't like yeah because i wanted to make a bunch of money it wasn't because i want it was because i wanted to have conversations with people yeah. that I, I enjoy talking about topics that I nerd out on. I, I want to talk mm-hmm. about stuff, right? And, you know, that's what makes things as successful is when you can be relatable and you can be just like everybody else, but doing cool stuff. And and one of the, you don't have to have a $100,000 Jeffrey's Performance Evo build car with carbon fiber, everything and billet, everything. And you don't have to have that. You just have to have something real and go and do it and, and just take yep. a photo or a video or have a buddy take a photo or video or something. Uh, you yep. just have to do something and show something and people will start connecting with you. Exactly. No, I 100% agree. So you're, uh, like I was saying earlier, you've been doing a lot of stuff down in, I think, uh, Havasu and, and those places. I think you've connected with, uh, it was it Optic Helicopters? Uh, yeah. You know, kind of how has that relationship been built over time? And, and what is that actually, perf- a lot of people look at those helicopters that fly around like the Mint 400 or, you mm-hmm. know, the race scenes they are like, oh, that'd be so cool to be up there. Uh, you know, for the most part, they're camera helicopters, right? They're the guys for the, yeah. the event going up and taking shots and getting footage. But mm-hmm. there's been kind of a growth over the last couple of years down in places like San Hall, um, um, uh, Havasu and Glamis mm-hmm. and, and that where you as an average Joe can actually pay to go up in one of these helicopters or have your buddy go film you in your car at these week on these weekend events and stuff like that. Um, how I find that as a nerd, I'm always interested in kind of how things work and the gr- way, yeah. the way things grow. Like, what are you seeing there? How has that benefited you and, and some of those relationships you've built there? How is that helping you in your marketing efforts? Yeah. So I started, um, I met Derek, who's the owner of Octic Helicopters, um, through my friend, Bobby, who is a film guy at the races. So we started, um, he had me ride along as a spotter. So basically just like calling stuff out, keeping track of what we're filming, all that. Um, so we started flying with Derek probably five ish years ago. Um, and back then it was just, just him coming to the races. We'd fly for a few hours. He had another job that he did full time and that was just kind of like a fun side thing. And then a couple years ago, um, he wanted to start doing like you're saying like bringing people into it like this is it is rad i've been in the helicopter probably a hundred times now and every time i'm still like way to brag i mean (laughs) but it's still like it's still just as cool as it was the first time um and so he wanted to be able to have anyone do that and so a couple years ago he tried to he tried to start things up and it was tough and it was like right during covid so it was crazy but over the last couple years um it's blown up and so now he has he has two helicopters um out in glamis and then havasu he just switches for season because nobody's out in glamis when it's like you said 100 degrees outside <laughs> um but yeah i think that i mean that whole aspect of it is great um at the races and for for content and all of that it's awesome but then bringing people into it um out in those out in havasu and glamis is is super cool too and and we've had the jp logo and i've gotten my logo on his and so that's always cool to see flying around glamis and big flex um yeah (laughs) it is a big flex (laughs) 
Uh, we didn't mean it to be, but it's it's one of those things where it kind of humbles you. Like, wow, that's cool that we're up there. But um, no, we've been there with him since the beginning and super excited to see him do that. But yeah, it's a, it's a really cool, cool thing to just make what we do even, even better. I used to work for a company called 509 who makes snowmobile helmets and accessories and all that stuff. And, and the way they started as an actual business was making films up in the mountains. And mm-hmm. one of the big things that they were doing uh, back in the day was bringing helicopters into the picture and, you know, having these guys snow, snowmobile jump over these mountain ridges that, you know, they're going 200 feet or 300 feet or whatever. And there's a helicopter in the background. And then that guy has the shot, you know, with the red camera or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, and then all of a sudden drones came out and everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, we don't need helicopters. We just need drones. They're only a thousand bucks. Uh, whereas a helicopter is like a thousand bucks, you know, an hour. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that it's, it's funny to see the helicopter thing start to come around full circle, you know, mm-hmm. and become back a part of kind of the mentality of expanding our experience. Um, yeah. and it's even cooler now that we have private pilots and we have these guys that are willing to, you know, come down for the weekend and, and take people up and take families up and, you know, follow people on their car and have their buddy film them and, you know, all that stuff, which creates just an, an mm-hmm. elevated memory bank, right, of, of content yeah. that you have for yourself. Um, so one of the conversations I've had uh, this last week with somebody was about starting a YouTube channel and becoming a personal brand and a brand ambassador um, and I know that, you know, when you're working with these companies as a, as a marketing person, right, you start to work with some of those ambassadors and those people that are, you know, the, the personal identifiable people out in the industry. Um, you know, how does, how does an influencer quote unquote, or, a, or an ambassador or whatever, how does that work into your marketing efforts with these brands? Is that something that, you know, has grown over time? Has it gotten smaller over time? Is it more important, less important? How do you approach that kind of topic? Cause a lot of brands ask, how do we get more quote unquote influencers, people that have big followings to be involved with our brand? It's not just throwing them free product. It's, you know, mm-hmm. creating relationships and having them identify your brand. Is that something that's still important these days? Is that overstate its welcome? Is that more important? How do you see that? I think just focused on the UTV industry itself, the the influencers are more just people in the industry that we kind of maybe look up to or that have made a name for themselves um, rather than reaching out to these people with millions of followers or, or maybe musicians or whatever it may be. Like, like I just think of racers that, that all of these brands will reach out to or um, just people that have been kind of with us along the ride and have made that name for themselves by just doing what they do. Um, and i've even noticed like just with some of my personal stuff like i work with a lot of brands just building my cars so i'm not i mean and we'll talk about your I, cars in a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um but yeah so it's really just like people that everybody knows kind of in the industry um so like i think of like dustin jones is a big one um obviously he works with a lot of brands and and is can am and all of that but he's like you see him at the races and go hang out with him or he's at all the shows and just walking around talking to everybody so it's really just like just us but they're just kind of focus more on on building the brand rather than just building stuff for themselves and i've talked with a number of brands and you know when you talk to can-am or you talk to polaris or you talk to you know some of these big important industrial brands that support our industry and that have created our industry you know they're less they're less interested more and more about people just posting pictures of their product or p- posting, mm-hmm. you know, a video of you approving of their service or product or whatever. They're more interested in seeing the lifestyle be portrayed on a consistent basis. Right. And you, yeah. you brought up uh, Dustin Jones, right? Like that guy is a wild dude. Like he's <laughs> all personality. He's all up yeah. front a hundred percent of the time, every day, every hour. And you know, that guy, it really has dominated that whole idea. Like, the lifestyle representation in in that concept and um those people are so rare to naturally occur on their own Mm -hmm. and you know if you can as a business you can find somebody that is that way that just naturally are that way you Mm -hmm. know i find it like that's a big investment like you put put some chips there because those people will bring you so much more exposure to your brand and, and identifiable 
connection to your brand if you can work with them to do that. Um, obviously, when you get to the, his level where he's working with the OEs and he's working with yeah. those brands, there's a lot more money flowing around to get things done. But as a small brand, if you can make those connections, I think that's super important. Yeah. And it's kind of like you said, it's not always just, hey, I use this product and it's great or, hey, go get this new thing from them. It's the best ever. Like, it's just, oh, I saw that that was on his car and and he always is loving whatever. And so they kind of just put two and two together. It's more natural, I feel like, more days where it's not you need to post an Instagram story saying that this product is available now. Like right. it's more just integrated in everything. And I think that that's a, it's a better look, but, but yeah. I think it's interesting that like Instagram and Facebook and, and TikTok they tell us to do things a certain way. They give us tools and they're like, here's a new way to link. Here's a new way to put your, mm-hmm. your shop on a link on your post and, and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. And I think we lose sight of like, well, they're telling us to do it this way. So we're going to do it that way. That's yeah. Musk, and and there's some of that that is like, yeah, their algorithm is going to work better if you do that. But in the long run, the long tail of the game, the better return is when you can see the guy doing the thing with the product, with the service, whatever the case is. And they're not even, you know, saying to go look at this product. They're just like, yeah. look what I did. And then you're like, holy crap, mm-hmm. you could do that because he had that product, right? Like, what what yeah, tie rod exactly. was that? What trailing arm was that? What axle was that? Um, exactly that conversation if you can spur that conversation it's more about doing the thing versus it versus showing the thing exactly so uh what kind of a uh, car are you riding these days uh you, over the last couple of years you've gone through some custom builds with evo and and jeffries and you've had some pretty high dollar cars over there some yes. high horsepower cars and you're not racing yes. so you gotta you gotta <laughs> do something right yeah, these are, I build play cars nowadays. Uh, I'm retired is what I tell everybody. But um, I like to build a new car every year just to bring out to to Glamis and kind of like we've been talking about, just put all the new stuff on it. And whether it's just going out and getting photos of everything or just having it for the season. Um, I try and plan little trips with it every couple months, um, if not every month, and go out and ride and just enjoy having the car i mean we build these hundred thousand dollar cars and then we don't want them to just sit there and be pretty so i like to be able to it's really cool to be able to build these and then go go have fun and play with them so i have um i built a new car last year right before dune season so like september um and i've ridden it for however long it's been and then i think my plan is to tear this one down and just rebuild it just because I want to kind of... Well, even just getting a new car is pretty different. hard right now. <laughs> so. It is. It's a whole... It's a it's a big process. And even trying to... We try and build them to release and by sand show. Kind of that's our mark for season. Um, and it's a lot of work. I mean, people think that it's just all for show and whatever but it's like they just happen outs- they just show up on instagram yeah, and it's, like done. It's, a, it's a lot of months of work and sourcing things and figuring out what works and what doesn't and um and it's not like so you yeah, have I a think- plug and play car either you got with the group that you roll with it's it's give us give yeah, us a little insight can. to what your build is right now yeah, so right now i have um i don't have a big turbo on mine yet i would like to do that for next season <laughs> so power wise it's there i have the i have a whole motec system i have um oh i'm putting all new suspension on everything but it's got everything basically is aftermarket you know cage seats doors wrap lights um i've got a bumper and so basically we tear it down so it's naked and then add everything bulk everything up so and with the 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 tight tie-ins you have with the performance groups that you do you you i think it was last year's car last year's car you were doing what three something 380 horsepower 400 horsepower something Mm -hmm. like that and uh and so when you jump up to the big turbo what are you guys shooting for what kind of setup are you looking for i haven't decided yet they're uh (laughs) they're actually coming out with a new turbo that's in the in the cooking right now so i think that'll be it'll it'll be right up there we were actually talking about that today where a couple years ago when we thought that 300 horsepower was like wild like we made it and then 500 horsepower and now we're like (laughs) well what's it gonna be next like we've done all these 500 horsepower and people are still like all right what's up next like what do you got bigger so 
it's crazy how far these UTVs have have come. But and you guys have been traditionally can am a can am group as far as performance goes. You just got so much untapped power in those motors, the triples. Um, are you guys entertaining any of the work with the the Pro R or the Turbo R setup or any of that? Yeah, yeah, no, we've actually been working on that like tirelessly lately, and and it's funny, like anything we post on social media, it doesn't matter what it is, people are like, "Where's the Pro R stuff? Like, when's Pro R <laughs> stuff coming out?" Um, and it's actually like in the books to to be out in the next few weeks. So, which is the Pro R? I mean, we've always not necessarily been k- team can am, but it's always just kind of laid out that way. Um, but this pro R is wild. And so no Todd and Todd and Jim have been working hard on that stuff. So that should be coming out soon. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy what, what these things have grown into. Yeah. I can't wait to see, you know, kind of some of the upgrades and things that are happening right now. There's a lot of, uh, hard goods guys that are coming out with new stuff for those machines. Um, and I think people just assume that all the companies like have secret back doors into Polaris and secret back doors into Can-Am and they can just like, Hey, what do we need to do that? Okay. Let's write that down. Let's go do it. All right. It's for sale. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't yeah. happen that way. Right. Yeah. Like you go look at, uh, some of these performance shops They're they're doing night and day testing. They're doing, you know, uh, fuel mapping and, and all these different things that go into the performance cars that just literally take time. And, uh, yeah. and it's just like we were talking about the, the marketing stuff. Like when you see a video come out, that video could have taken a year, year and a half of planning. Mm-hmm. It could have taken a month of shooting. It could have got delayed halfway through and then reshot like yep. later. Like there's so much that goes on to the back end of stuff, including building products and, um, working with brands that do both hard goods and soft goods and, and all this other stuff. Um, are there any kind of differences in the way you approach portraying their brand messages or is it just kind of unique to every brand i think that it it is unique to every brand and every brand kind of has their their own niche but um but there's definitely you want to focus on the the audience is the big thing and a lot of the time we have that same audience for all of these different brands but but it branches off and i think a lot of the time even being down here like you said in this little we're so UTV heavy down here that like we forget about the mud guys and we forget about the rock crawler guys and all this. And, and so I think that it's always kind of just like refocusing on the, Hey, who are we talking to? Who is this product going to help out? Like who can we kind of focus on? Um, so I think that's a central thing with all of these brands. And then obviously everyone just has their own image um, and you want to portray that, but yeah, it's uh, it keeps me on my toes, being <laughs> which I'm sure you can relate. Yeah, yeah, back and forth all day between these different these different brands and images and all that. So it's fun. So when we talk about <clears throat> working with different angles and different you know marketing efforts and different designs and, and all this other stuff, you know, you do a lot of different things from logo design to you know website stuff to content creation to planning and organization and and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, kind of what is your favorite way to, to work with, with this? Is it, is it creating t-shirts? Is it, is it working with film guys? Is it like, what's, what's that one thing that just makes you smile every time you're done with it? My, my big thing is content. I love going out and going, like seeing everything come together. So like we've talked about, there's a ton of planning behind everything and sourcing. And, and so it's always fun to go out and get that that content and then come back and see it presented as whether it's a campaign or a new video or whatever, like that's always a good feeling. So I'd say that that's my favorite, but I like to do all of the other stuff in between, because I feel like if I was only doing that, I'd get tired of it and get frustrated and whatever. So I love having that mixture of kind of doing a little bit of everything. Um, but I'd say that's my that's where it's at for me. <laughs> and and to speak to that, when we were at Sandsport this last year, you know, I saw you running around the whole time, you know, <laughs> with your head in your phone and, and talking to people and, and talking while you're running and, and all that stuff. Uh, kind of yeah. give us a little behind the scenes of like when you approach working with these brands that like, let's just say Sandsport, right? It's a, the biggest mm-hmm. show of the year. There's 30, 40, 50,000 people there, whatever the case is on a good year or bad year. Um you know, and there's so many brands that you're interconnecting with and doing all that. What does your prep look like going into that? And and then what are you doing to not keep your head from falling off while you're at the shows? 
yeah, it's kind of nice working with so many related brands because I can kind of go to shows like that and it's like the center of everything. So I can get a little <laughs> bit for everybody. Like it kind of works out, but, um, I, um, I do just try and focus on it's, it's tough sometimes being torn between so many different companies, but, um, I definitely try and focus on making sure that everyone gets that same, like the same attention. Um, so like going to shows and stuff, obviously I'll, I'll reach out to everyone, figure out how we can help, what they're going to have there, what we want to push, um, go around. I have to have two phones now cause you can only have nine Instagram accounts on one phone. Right. So I had to get another phone so I could add more Instagram <laughs> accounts. Um, so it's just getting You're like just going flexing to the again shows. with the whole, like, <laughs> I got multiple iPhones. I don't know that it's a flex. I wish I could do it all on one phone, but <laughs> But um, we like to do stories and stuff out there. So whether we, a lot of the time I'll bring out somebody to get like the, um, we call it just like the, the real content, like a video guy who will come out and film stuff and then put a reel together of the whole event or whatever it may be. But, but going back to like the personal side of it, we're out there with our phone, you know, talking to people in the stories and, and getting that kind of stuff. So um it's definitely it's a lot of work like getting all of that stuff out there but it's it's another just fun aspect of the job to be out there kind of just because not everybody can go to the shows so to be able to show that and, and put right. it out there another time that we kind of do that same thing is like i said um that opening weekend in glamis where we'll kind of plan so we bring all those guys out but we'll do stuff with evo and we'll do stuff with uh, Jeffries will do stuff with rigid and JL and kind of it all works together, but, um, it makes it a little easier for me <laughs> when they're all there. So, so do you have, a uh, any teammates, anybody working with you that help you cover these events and do these kind of on-site visits and stuff like that? Or is it just purely you running around with five iPhones and two iPads and a laptop? Right now, it's just me. Um, I'm just, I have help come in every once in a while with little projects. Um, but as far as getting out at these events and shows and shoots and everything, um, it's usually working with those other people. So the, the, the video guys that I work with or the photographers or whoever it may be um, end up doing a lot of work. And I'm super grateful for them. I even was talking to the my friend that does video stuff that came out to stand hollow with me. I know I put in the work planning it, getting everything ready and, and doing the the social side of it, but he was there filming the whole time and making sure we got all the shots. And so like he was putting in the work too. And so it's, it's really a joint effort when it comes to that stuff. But um, as far as, as the, the general work, it's just, just me, me and Luna <laughs> kicking it. <laughs> That's one thing that I, I do enjoy is watching the stories happen with Luna, you know, on the <laughs> desk or on the printer or in the yes. on the dash or, or whatever. Yep. And just to, for those that aren't following, um, Lindsay is uh, she has a little Frenchie that goes with her on a lot of these trips and, and does a lot of these things with her. And it's always I'm a sucker for a Frenchie. I'm a sucker for any kind of little bully. But the just what i mean even your profile pic on yeah. <laughs> instagram has, <laughs> has has her up there so um you know it's always it's always good to see the personal connection to to people and these events and stuff like that and i i, I animals always just do that for me too yeah she's she's a personality all in herself she's crazy <laughs> so uh if a, if a brand's out there and they're looking to to move forward with growing their audience and things like that um you know you, you talk about being at these events and you're working for these brands and and so you are that person that they didn't have originally or or you're helping their person do that job or whatever mm -hmm. uh a lot of these small brands don't have those people right but they do you know it's like a family business so the family's there right or or whoever um one thing i always tell them is just have your kid go take photos or videos of the event it doesn't they don't have to talk yep. they don't have to do anything like just do something like show people yeah. that you're there that you're doing these things and that'll help push you forward um it, it's not about the quote unquote quality it's not about the specific demographic targeted seo this and that it's it's more about just being there and being a part of it so if mm -hmm. you're a business out there and you're looking to grow and, and start to do more 
um, really look at these events, really look at ca capturing the fact that you are doing those things beyond just the creation and the servicing that you're doing as a business. Um, when we talk about branding and all that stuff, are there any takeaways that somebody could have for, you know, as far as representing their, their logo, their, their messaging, their, uh, to me, it's always about keeping it simple, right? Don't try to do things mm -hmm. flashy, try to keep things simple. Um, is there any, there's a lot of these brands that like they can't draw and do Photoshop themselves or whatever. Are there resources for people like that? Cause they, they might not be able to afford you to come in and do a contract for a year or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, are there resources for, for small businesses to get kind of that, that ball rolling? Yeah. And I know there are even a ton of websites that if you Google, you know, logo design, um, that, that will give you a basic logo to, and you don't need to make that you don't have to have that logo to make your brand what it is. You know, you can build that brand regardless of what your, what your logo or your image looks like. So I think that it's important and down the road when you get big and, and are trying to brand it that way, that, that look is important. But when you're getting started and just trying to kind of polish things up, like just focus more on, on the actual brand and who you are and what you're doing versus, versus that, um, the paper image of everything but but yeah there are definitely like websites that i know I, I like to to shoot people to there's a few other um smaller businesses that kind of just like to design stuff on the side just girls that um don't necessarily do it for work but just for fun um like those are always great people to reach out to to get you a logo or apparel or whatever it may be but yeah there's definitely ways to do it where you don't have to be paying the big bucks to to get a logo so yeah and one thing that i found is uh your local like rap company the guys that do the wraps on your cars or mm -hmm. if you go to these events there's there's rap companies there or like graphics people or things like that that are working these shows they all know somebody right they all mm -hmm. know somebody that's either in school or whatever and the great thing about our industry is that there's so many like personal connections to people like that you know, someone's daughter wanted to do this. Someone's son started to get into cameras. Like there's always somebody that's doing something right. And a lot of those people are looking for just the opportunity to practice, to, to, to try doing stuff. Right. And, um, I don't want people to think that you can just go out and get stuff for free. Like I'm not saying like you're, you're going to get free yeah. work for exposure, quote unquote, but, but there are people that are always trying to learn and experience stuff. So if you have no resources, try to tap into that community side because those businesses that are doing graphic design and stuff like that, they always know somebody. Um, yeah. And if you are creating a personal connection, you can get those kind of connections with those people. Um, there are websites that will do kind of like the logo design or the, the video intro things or whatever, like Fiverr or, you know, any of those mm -hmm. places. Um, but I always try to push people towards people versus like yes. websites. Um, mm -hmm. and so if you're a small business looking to kind of revamp your branding, I would say, try to connect with those, like try to find those sign companies or something like that. They always know somebody if not themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and the thing that people don't remember is that having a picture isn't a logo. <laughs> I get yeah. people all the time, like sending me like photos <laughs> or something. They're like, I want that to be my yeah. logo. It's like, you can't print, you can't print that. Yeah. <laughs> like, that you doesn't work. You a t-shirt maybe down the line, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I, I, I'm just looking for, for ways to, to kind of help people uh, grow in our industry because it's so important for the aftermarket. It's so important mm -hmm. for these brands that are not the big OEs um, that are consolidating currently. There's, there's a lot of that going on in our industry right now where the medium, the big businesses are starting to consolidate. And the aftermarket is going to really need to play a big, important role in the future of our sport. And I think it's super important that they get, start to understand some of the dynamics behind the marketing and how it works and the importance of the community tie-in. So mm -hmm. speaking to the 2022 season coming up, are there any shows you're looking forward to going to? Are there any sh brands uh, working with you right now that you've got some big stuff coming out that you're looking forward to? Uh, kind of give us some teasers on uh, what's what's getting your itch going uh, this season. Yeah, so I mean, Sandsport, like I said, is always one of our favorites, and and looking forward to kind of rebuilding my car, not necessarily releasing a whole new car, but releasing a new build. Um, so that's always, I enjoy that a ton, just working with the brands and bringing out something new and trying to one up myself from last season. Um, 
RJ does that every season too, which last year he came out with an insane car. Um, so I don't know how he's going to top that, but <laughs> it's always fun to see <laughs> um, the attempt. But yeah, I just down here, dune season and Glamis is like the Mecca. Like we love going out there. It's, it's still work most of the time, but, but it's three hours away and we go out there almost every weekend. And it's just a ton of fun to be able to kind of work towards that. Um, and having our builds out there. But so, yeah, I definitely say we're traveling around a bunch. We're going to go to to Oregon and Idaho and Utah um, in the next few months. And those are always fun and going out to those. And then once we hit September, it's pretty much there's something every weekend, whether it's a race <laughs> or a show or a, or something. Um, it gets crazy, but but that's definitely a fun time of the year. So, uh, you mentioned a few of the brands you work with, uh, everyone pretty much that works in the performance area has products and services coming out around Sandsport. So look forward to mm -hmm. those brands, um, at the Sandsport super show. Um, and then usually right before dune season in, in the fall, there's usually another round of things that come out, uh, whether that be content or products or, you know, videos, things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, I always look forward to those. And then some of those bigger athletes, they always got some harebrained scheme going on with some media company <laughs> somewhere about Havasu or somewhere. Uh, yeah. So those are always fun to watch. But uh, how can we follow you online? How can we connect with you uh, on social? And how can we follow some of these brands that you're working with and some of the stuff you're doing? Yeah, um, my biggest thing is social media. So my Instagram is LG Creative Co. Um, we mentioned it before we hopped on the show, but my website is currently down. One of those things where I'm working more on everyone <laughs> well, else's it's not stuff down, and forget down. about it my says, own. <laughs> it just says something It's wrong, just but... not available, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, we'll get there. So that'll be up soon. Uh, but yeah, social media, I'm always on there. You can follow me on there, message me on there. Um, all my contact, my email and everything is through there. So um, that's the best way to get a hold of me. And I'm always on there. So if a brand is looking for, you know, opportunities or maybe some advice or um, maybe some opportunities to work with you or some of your cohorts, what's the best way to contact you? Is it through the contact form on your website or just DMs or or what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, just DM me. Honestly, I'm, I'm looking through there all the time. Um, I got a few yesterday just even asking about one was apparel, one was a website, one was social stuff. So um, I'm always scrolling through there and it's kind of nice to be able to see what they have so far, even just what, what the, instead of just an email where it's, Hey, this is my name. This is my business. You can say, it gives oh, you a lot of context. Yeah. Yeah. You can kind of get an insight of who they are and what they're doing just from there. So yeah, I'd say that's the best way to reach me. Um, I'm usually looking through there every day. So <laughs> and if you want to follow the adventures of Luna and uh, Lindsay, yes. <laughs> uh, follow them on Instagram. There's always something good in the stories there. So, um, yeah. So if you're a small business, don't don't get overwhelmed by marketing. It's it it does really a lot of times uh, seem like it's overwhelming, but it's more important about doing. It's more about uh, important about going out and showing people that you're a part of the community. So uh, on that note, get out, have fun, have a safe weekend, and until the next time, guys. Peace.